I'm Jean Reith. And I'm Kyle Thompson. And you're listening to the end of General Intellect Unit. I'm very sorry, folks, uh, but we're wrapping up. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, it, it, this isn't like a personal bust up or any sort of political disagreement or anything like that. Um, it's purely personal reasons. A couple of couple of months ago, I took a new job and it's just so much more intense than I kind of bargained for. And and some other like personal factors have conspired to mean that I just don't have spare time anymore ever. <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah. uh, for the, for the sake of my health, something has to go, and this is unfortunately it. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those situations where either you make some changes to give yourself a break, like at least, you know, like you can't you can't crunch for months and months on end. Um, And, uh, you know, you give yourself some time uh, or you end up in the hospital. You know, those are the really the two options. Right. (laughs) And obviously, yeah, not ending up in the hospital is preferable to ending up in the hospital. So um, I've seen it. I've seen it happen to many people. So, yeah, I I completely understand uh, that that whole thing. The, the hospital is not the hospital is not a non-factor here. Like um, I had mm-hmm. I had, like over over like November and December, I had some minor heart issues, which turned out to be minor heart issues. But that did throw a bit of. A bit of relief on like I need to look after myself better and not be as as yes. I, I I'm I'm somebody who tends to overwork like a lot um and you know I think when you when you wake up and you think you're having a heart attack it's kind of it's kind of like oh maybe something has to change I didn't actually have a heart attack which was great um uh, it just turned out there's something maybe a little funny but not immediately worrying going on there but you know. It, it, it's a lot of the, it's it's just personal factors really um and i kind of need to look after myself a bit better and working less is part of that so uh yeah it, it fucking sucks because like this has been a huge thing um which is why i was kind of delaying this kind of decision for a while because like this has been a huge thing for oh jesus like seven years or something it's been it's been crazy i think that's right um yeah. Yeah. Huge amount of work and, and content produced. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen a lot doing this show. Um, and I, again, I think it's 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 pretty incredible that like we've gone seven years without having any fights or yeah, without having any major <laughs> like political no disagreements. disagreements between each other. Like it, it really just. It just blows my mind, like when you, you because know, you know we've been doing this for seven years and we've seen all kinds of blowups and fights and drama and everything that you expect to happen in like, you know, podcasting and then especially in political podcasting, right? Um, but yeah, it's been smooth sailing the whole way, and that is just amazing. It is right, like, and it's 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 amazing that this kind of like very chance encounter led to this long project and this this friendship developing and like it's been we've just been so compatible and that, i think that's the, the part of the magic of the show was just the compatibility and chemistry um between the two of us and the i, th- I think often when i'm editing i notice a very interesting push-pull kind of d- dynamic um where the conversation emerges it's 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 very interesting stuff um like i don't know like i was thinking just along those lines of like it's remarkable that it lasted this long like I often wonder about people doing long running projects, like how they keep going through to things like that. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the thing that the thing that jumped to my mind was this. I, I, I still find kind of mind blowing fact that like uh, Kentucky Route Zero took like, what, nine years or something to fully release it. You know, it was from 2013. <laughs> no, it wasn't nine years. It was more like seven. I don't know. Anyway. It, that was this episodic thing that they were working on for ages, and yes, very long project. But the the, 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 the remarkable thing is, I met and subsequently married my now wife in the gap between episodes. Yes, yeah, right in the gap between episodes three and four. And I looked this up earlier, and like we met like a month after episode three uh, came out, and we were married a month before episode four came out. And I remember this that like. When we were getting ready to go to the fucking city hall, like, I was just sitting on the edge of the bed, like, refreshing the Kentucky Route Zero website to check if there were any updates. And 
I don't know, like, and I kind of wondered at, even at the time, and it's something I've reflected on since, is like, what must it be like for the creators of that to go through this stuff? Because like, that, that was me going through a big life transformation stuff. But like, what are they going through? You know, like, yeah, I just checked and it was nearly 10 years. So like nine plus. Unreal. Yeah. So like that, that's a long time. But like, um, like in a couple of years, you can go through a lot. But like, I just always I always find it remarkable that people can stick to these creative projects for so long, because like, in, you know, again, like, I mean, I, I went through some that, that's a happy story, right? Like you go through you, you have some life transforming kind of stuff happen there. But like. As a creator, you keep going through, like, a fucking a marriage, a divorce, a cancer scare, you know? <laughs> any any number of fucking things that can happen in a life. And and enveloping all of that is the, the span of a project. Um, I don't know. It's 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 strange, right, <laughs> that, that, that things last. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, I mean, I feel like, you know, in the run of this show, it's sort of like... You know, we started out, um, I had massive uh, disruption in my life, having to move to Kobe and work there. Um, and then moving to Canada after that. And um, I feel like, you know, we had like the whole first like, or maybe the only, but who knows at this point, Trump presidency happened, all the <laughs> politics that was going on with that. And yeah. The, the lockdown happened and that was a huge life disruption as well. And I feel like, you know, and I started my, my PhD, you know, and, and so I feel like really it was like, for me personally, it was like the PhD, starting the PhD, um, the lockdown, uh, and then uh, you starting this new job were really the three things that sort of like changed the the production of the show, changed the the pacing of the show. Um, uh, yeah, and those are the sort of milestones that come up to me over the whole run of this thing. Um, and it, you know, it's been uh, pretty regular. Like we've just adjusted things as we went, and it wasn't like. You know, we did like a massive disruption at any point, uh, really. But um, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, you, I, I think one thing we talked a lot about on the show was sort of like this idea of like organizations that don't get into that like negative homeostatic situation of like <laughs> perpetuating themselves over the individuals that make them up. Uh, and I feel like the show has never really been that like, we've always just like adjusted things when we needed to. And that flexibility is like kept things pretty like on the level. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think, um, there's something about the way we, handle the show and the way we present it to the world that makes it amenable to that like we were never committed to a weekly schedule or anything like that um that was never part of the bargain i think that's part of the implicit bargain you have as a listener with a lot of shows is that it's a weekly thing and it, it comes out on a schedule um this project actually reminds me uh, structurally and I, I i don't think it's an accident that we're both musicians that it reminds me a lot of like a music project like where you have you know you have some obscure like italian black metal band and it's it's two, just two people who put out three albums in the course of 17 years you know what i mean yeah and it's every, every one of them is just this crafted fucking monolith and it's just the it's a project that just produces these well considered artifacts at its own pace and I think that this project has reminded me a lot of that kind of dynamic where it's a, um, I think the show is very like, it's not that we're totally unconcerned for the audience, but there's a certain kind of distance. It's very kind of take it or leave it, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we, we sort yeah, of, yeah. Here, here's what we're doing. We're presenting it. And I, I was, I'm, I've always appreciated that people liked it ever. Like, I think that was remarkable. Yes. <laughs> that's how I felt as well. Like it, 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 it felt like, um, 
you know, you came to me with like sort of the idea for doing this show and we we started something and we kind of, you know, we did we did put it out there on some different sites, but we really weren't trying to tune our approach or our content to what the audience wanted. It was really just like, we think this is important. We would like to talk about this. And so we're going to do a show about it. And it happened to coincide very well with, I think, what was going on um, among people like of our generation within like political trends at the time um, in terms of sort of the upsurge of socialism, the increase in political consciousness among tech workers. Um, and, and that, you know, worked out great. And so it was sort of like, we don't need to change what we think is important. And thankfully, you know, the audience, you know, it's gone up and down here and there, but like, basically we had an audience for what we were doing and we were super appreciative of that. Um, yeah. And, 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 um, I think the show has been, I think, I think, you know, one positive thing was that, like, I think this show essentially was a little bit ahead of its time uh, in terms of what we were looking at and what we thought was important. Um, you know, uh, focusing on these these topics of sort of like socialism and tech uh, in the way that we did and covering, you know, things like cybernetics and management, I feel like, yeah, we were a little bit ahead of the curve and that really worked to our advantage in terms of finding an audience that was interested in listening to what we had to say. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think, um, like, I, I like to try and stay humble about things, but I do think this was a fairly unique thing that, like, especially at the time that it started, like, I don't, I don't think there were many... I, I think I think nowadays you get a bit more of the like tech criticism podcast lefty sort of stuff like and you have a few more options there but um I th I, th I kind of still th feel that the the systems angle and the kind of very hard like technical questions of like how do you actually transform the world like for real you know what I mean like how mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And what what are complex systems and how do they survive? Um, those are things that I was always very disappointed by, just kind of in the left in general. Um, I, I felt like other other people, like so t technically minded people, tended to just take those questions seriously, and I felt like a lot of my comrades sort of didn't largely. Um, and it, especially when the stakes are so high, it's like okay, we need to we need to transform the world in various ways. We need to save the world and stuff and it's like yeah but like what you're proposing is a coordination project probably larger than anything that's ever fucking happened like what's your plan for doing it is a kind of obvious question <laughs> yes like I, 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 I a good way to illustrate that is like um, a point that was made by Arnold on an episode of Fight Like an Animal some, at some point but he was like look if, if you want to like decommission all the nuclear reactors in the world and dispose of all the material safely to, to recuperate the environment and you want to do this regreening stuff, you know, and save the world from, from all the harmful effects of that stuff. Taking all of that shit apart and safely disposing of it would be a much, much, much larger challenge and much more coordinated than the project of building the fucking things in the first place. Because all, all of these individual nation-state actors could build the reactors piecemeal and individually foist off the the waste onto third world countries or whatever, you know. But a kind of world socialist kind of governance system would be faced with a much larger problem of globally decommissioning those things. Like let's say just let's just assume that that's a desirable project, whatever. But like that's a bigger fucking challenge than putting the things together in the first place. Um, Essentially, it's like dealing with like the technical debt of all these different projects, right? Yeah, right. And like, I, I think that's that's a lot of what we're faced with, with the prospect of, of socialism is like a massive cleanup effort for both the environmental 
the economic, the social wreckage of capitalism. And I just, I just don't think any of that stuff is easy. It's probably a lot harder than making the mess in the first place to clean it up. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, those are still very important questions. And like, yeah, like if, if you're going to decommission all these, these reactors and you don't have the option, because you have this globe sp spanning socialist, uh, um, you know, uh, world commune or whatever, you don't have the option of just dumping the nuclear waste on Ghana or fucking wherever, you know, where are you going to put it? And that's, that's fucking hard, right? And where's everyone going to put it? You know, what's what's the actual fucking plan here? That's a colossal coordination problem. And I think the show really took, we took those questions very seriously. The coordination of social activity is absolutely fundamental. And it's weird, weirdly, like, less commonly addressed than you think it should be amongst the left. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think, you know, it's... It's weird because if you're in opposition, um, it, it, you can kind of kick the ball down the road on that one to some degree, even though coordination is a, is a real issue within your own organization. Um, and then once you get into government or take power in some way, like there's an incentive to be dishonest, right? And to... to like when you're ad hocing things pretend that you aren't to create an illusion of competency um and and so it's kind of like in both situations there's a way in which you can sort of like yeah uh back burner the question and 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 or 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 evade it in some way um not Practically speaking, but in terms of sort of discourse and what is discussed, the, the, there's always a uh, incentive and an opportunity to do so, um, which might explain, you know, what happens and why this is, a, a, you know, something that's much more confined to different areas of discourse. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that, that's something I've always appreciated about what we did. Um, we took a lot of that kind of shit very seriously, and I, I would, I would like to see, I would like to see people continue to take that seriously. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I look at like you know what's happened during this show's run. I think the, the you know the clear positive is that there has been an increase in workers' consciousness, both in the tech sector and elsewhere. There's been an increase in worker organization and militancy. Um, you know, strike numbers are way up. Organization is way up. Uh, uh, industries that were previously very resistant to unionization have become unionized. I feel like, you know, workers have really, really been hit hard by the lockdowns and then subsequently the inflation um, and, uh, you know, this following the the 2008 crisis and so on, where, you know, just a consistent pattern of downloading costs onto the working class was really common. Um, and it's kind of gotten to the point where people see a really obvious benefit to organizing and to fighting for a better standard of living and hopefully for some political power as well uh within their organizations um i think that you know uh the record for political socialism has been a lot worse um there's been very few positives to point to um i think the workers movement has been a lot more successful than socialists have been because um this consistent pattern of you know, let's say you get past all the internal hurdles in your party and so on, and then you finally get into government and you just don't achieve anything. Uh, it's so it's so consistent. Like all you're doing is just managing the decline. Um, like uh, saw this with um, so many governments, but uh, the most recent one that comes to mind is just like the labor government in New Zealand, like. It's like, you know, it's just so dismal. Like, there's there's almost nothing positive you can point to in terms of 
sort of like really changing society for the benefit of the working class. Um, everything they tried to do was either just hot air or uh, ended up nowhere. And I, there's a lot of that in addition to just being quite successfully shut out of power in uh, in, uh, you know, the Labour Party in the UK, the Democratic Party in the US. Um, and uh, it, it, it's it's been really quite dismal. Um, but I do. And, you know, I think that I think that uh, for 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 socialists uh, such as ourselves, like I do understand that like morale is pretty low right now because because of all those defeats and 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 sort of un clear successes like whatever successes there have been it doesn't feel like it really moved the needle um and uh so th that is a weird place to be when at the same time the workers movement is really popping off and like having like actual successes that are like you know sort of historic and impressive um and so I think what we've tried to do with the show is like get at some of the issues that underlie our lack of success as socialists and 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 look for what the positive potentials are in the you know either the history of socialism or in current ideas that could apply to socialism and I hope that continues you know uh, certainly I intend to continue to um work on these things and and w w in whatever way i can um uh and and yeah like i'm i'm not feeling uh hopeless about the future but i do look at something like you know a starmer government coming into power in the uk and just sort of like want to take a stiff drink mm -hmm. yeah that, that, that's been it's been a very interesting thing to see develop in that like um I don't know, in some ways, like, the, the sort of... As, as much as, like, yeah, I think parliamentary kind of stuff is always going to be an absolute dead end, but, like, the, the Corbyn stuff was, like, a couple of years early or something. Like, if, if you had this moment where... I, I think that right now we've got this weird overlap. Like, the, the, the two sine waves have kind of overlapped in a weird way, where, like, the... As you say, the workers' movement is, is kind of starting to gain... Starting to begin to gain its feet again. But then the... The political representation side of it is so fucking dismal. Like, if 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 the Labour Party hadn't been absolutely gutted and become this Starmer nightmare, it would it would be a marginally more favourable situation to be in. But that's still different from putting putting any actual faith in in the Labour Party in in any guys to be able to do fucking anything useful. Um, but it, it would be less shitty to not have quite such a strong desynchronization, like a phase inversion between the waves. Well. Uh yeah, I, I think there are negatives and positives to it, right? Is like, you know, there is the negative where you're not receiving support from those in government to um, sort of like get the state off your back. Um, but the positive is also like the workers movement doesn't have to worry as much about... Um, recuperation and subterfuge from socialists who are uh n not working in their interests yeah like the, deco the decoupling is probably positive in the long run yeah, yeah. i think that you know it's the sort of mo moment where like i don't think we're gonna see like a revival of anarcho-syndicalism exactly but i do see a degree to which like workers movement, the workers movement could and, and is, you know, making some kind of governance move, some kind of like um, broader political changes on its own without socialist representatives or um, even like socialist intellectuals leading it necessarily. Um, and, and, and that can be positive. Um, for sure. There's like some fr uh, freedom of action there that I feel like definitely gets like smothered in the context where um, the unions are working 
to more than anything else, like improve the electability of whatever party they're associated with. Um, and, 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 you know, it, it's, it's definitely got its downsides to be out, uh, out of, out of any kind of control over the state, but there are opportunities there as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's very fair. Um, I, I hope it works out to be an advantage that we hopefully don't have to deal with all this, um, that the threat of recuperation and stuff, just like the, the, it, the disconnect could be, could be hugely productive. And that, that's what I want. I want to see, I want to see the working class on a war footing, like on a, on a very fucking aggressive war footing against the state and against capital. Cause I, I really think that's, that's all, that's the only actual hope. I, I, I just don't see any kind of w- world in which even a fucking Corbyn or Sanders or any of these kind of like the absolute fucking pinnacle that of of those kinds of like uh parliamentary or like uh state projects um they couldn't have fucking done anything right i think the only thing that could ever really get the goods is an honest to god like out and out war against the ruling class and i mean a fucking shooting war ultimately you know like that's kind of what it's going to take and like if I don't know, go, going door knocking for fucking labor, for, for Starmer's labor, is just something that's going to not deliver the fucking confrontation against the rulers, you know? It's a, it's a distraction. Well, I mean, it, it couldn't possibly be any clearer in the case of Starmer, right? Whereas, you know, essentially, like, he was just, like, the guy who was brought in to kill the labor left, and, like, he set the expectations going into the election like on the floor um uh in terms of what his government is going to accomplish and and made it very clear that like they're just there to serve their time collect a paycheck and manage the decline of the uk um they're a stay behind operation they're they're fucking operation gladio for the tories right like they're a stay behind operation that just holds the fucking guard while they wait for the return of the fucking king you know, like, that's the thing that's implicit in British politics is that I think it's basically implicit in fucking American politics or basically any any politics you can name now is that the right wing is kind of implicitly understood to be the rightful fucking rulers. And anytime you have any like center, even vaguely left wing kind of governance, it's a kind of implicitly understood to be a fucking temporary situation until the, the rightful king is restored. You know, it's fucking nuts. Yeah. And I mean, at least for them, they're very, they've been very clear about that kind of attitude. So, you know, you look at something like that and it's just like, oh, I mean, uh, sorry, that's, that's not what I'm going to put my time into exactly. But like, I I was like, I'm not really that interested in making sure you get a, you get a fat pension when you retire, which seems to be the only reason they exist. Um, And uh, if you look at other examples, where it's like, you know, governments that were somewhat further to the left that got elected is is yeah it's just not encouraging because you know like i was playing like democracy for yesterday and it's like a terrible political simulator but it is kind of a fun sandbox to screw around in um like and you know it's just like any of the sort of socialist policy changes you could make in that game that would like really move the needle in terms of like making a better society, a more uh, a, 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 a fairer, more equitable society with more freedom and and all of these kinds of things. Um, like it's never even attempted, you know. It's like it's like it's not it's not even you couldn't even begin to have a discussion about it. Like so, like there's no indication that like things are you know really going to improve like i feel like here in canada we've had things like um the liberals being propped up by the the social democrats and you know they had to just fight for years and years and years and years to get like public dental care for the elderly and that was like years of fighting to get that you know and like it's like that's That's like the horizon of possibility, right? It's like you fight like hell. You fight for years and years and you get public health care for the dent or for dental care for the the elderly added to the public health care system. And, you know, maybe if you're lucky, you'll get like some decent public daycare 
for parents, right? Like it's it's like it, it, you have to do a titanic struggle to make something like that happen. And things like let's actually reverse the tendency of like a massive increase in wealth inequality and political power inequality in the country is like we can't even begin to fathom it happening. Right. And so that's where it's sort of like, yeah, I mean, I can totally see why it makes sense if you're a worker to put your efforts into organizing your workplace, trying to get a better, better pay package, trying to get better safety on your job, et cetera, et cetera. Things that will actually make a difference in your life, maybe like, you know, maybe put you a little bit ahead of the curve in terms of inflation instead of like, oh, I'm going to put all my efforts into making sure that I get a party in power that can like fight for four years to get one policy passed. Um, it, it's 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 a bit much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, it's it's just I, that's what I want to see. I want to see more of the, the more organization amongst the working class, the better. Um, I, I maintain that all that political shit is basically a waste of time. Um, uh Maybe in some distant, like, well, hopefully not too distant kind of future where the working class is on a war footing and there might be a question of, like, what kind of invasive viral kind of maneuvers could you do into the state to, like, stymie it and, like, break it down and stuff. Like, that would be another conversation. You know, if you could get to that point where you could, like, run candidates en masse to do the Sinn Féin strategy of just never taking their seats and, like, strangling the parliament that way... I, I would love to see the day that made any fucking sense. I would love to see the day that made sense. Um, but that's not today. But but I mean, even, even they've run into a weird situation in Northern Ireland, right? Where it's like... They've basically, like, defaulted into power, but can't actually separate from the UK. So, like... It's just bizarre. Uh, I mean, we've 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 had that happen previously in um, in Quebec in Canada, uh, but the uh, Pelti Québécois they never had a strategy of um, being in Parliament to disrupt Parliament, um, except at the federal level, which where they did do that. But at the provincial level, they were just trying to govern and. Um, yeah, it doesn't go well, uh, this kind of situation. Um, so I, I hope, I hope for the best for them, but it seems to me like a dire, a dire position for them to be in. Um, you get, you get sucked in, you know, you, you get sucked into, you get sucked into that fucking machine. And like, I, I genuinely think at, at least for now, again, like one can imagine hypothetical scenarios in which the, these political organs might be tailing a very strong working class or like become armaments of the working class against the state whatever and those those are those are hypotheticals you could entertain but those are just not true at the moment and i think for now and for the foreseeable future the winning move is to, is not to play just don't get your fucking hands dirty don't get involved in that, that kind of shit focus on organized working people that's the only thing that matters for now i mean i mean i think that's where the opportunities are at this moment um and it's worth seizing them because you know like for a lot of this show Right. A lot of this show, we talked about alienation, a atomization, um, the working the like the workers movement, just not being on the scene, like constantly on the back foot, always on the defensive. Well, that's not the case right now. So, I mean, I feel like if you're a socialist, if you're a worker, like it makes sense to put your energy there at this moment, because like we've been waiting so long for something like this to happen. This is the fucking thing. This is the moment. It's the thing. Jump on it <laughs> while it's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, in many ways, it's like the worst possible time to end the show, because all the shit that we've been <laughs> praying for is finally happening. And then, like, in the tech world with all this, like, this this language model stuff, I mean, we've we've been very critical of, like, um, AI and all, like, we've, it, it's, it's not, it's not what it's, it's not what it's billed as, but I think it, it is a substantial shift in the means of production, and thus knock-on effects of, like, how that's going to affect relations of production, how it's going to affect people's lives. It's, it's a huge, 
it's a huge fucking change and we're we're packing up our shit and going home just at the moment it starts rolling it's 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 interesting the timing <laughs> yeah for sure i mean i i agree i think um you know all the like i've tried to keep an open mind about all of this llm stuff and what it can do what it can't do what's good about it what's bad about it and you know try to experiment with things wherever i could i've reached out to people to be like you know hey what are you working on like can i see your sort of beta software to see like you know what are you doing um and you know some of it is very interesting but um it's it, it's absolutely without a doubt like shaking things up in terms of employment um and 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 really i think creating a desperate situation for a lot of workers in tech and outside of tech in terms of like even just um even just uh, getting through screening for your resume, right? Uh, like even just getting an interview, like it's it's having an effect there, big time. And and so it feels like, you know, once again, the motto has been move fast and break things, and it's like everybody's scrambling to try to deal with this. Um, and, uh, I am, I, I, yeah, I really, I, I, it just makes me so angry that this technology is <laughs> just sort of given free reign to be deployed in, in the name of capital and, 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 you know, devil take the hindmost, right? Um, it just makes me so angry that it's like, yeah, this technology has potential to do interesting things, but like the way in which it's being deployed is very predictable. And like every, like, you know, anyone who could regulate this is just rolling over. Um, it's, it's the same old story. And it's like, it doesn't have to be this way. And, and, yeah, it seems like a waste of the ingenuity of the people who made it, but also like just like nobody learning from any of their mistakes. Um, uh, and and yeah, a lot of people just trying to get as rich as they can as fast as possible. Yeah, it's um, it, it's it's so it's fucking dismaying to see all this kind of shit. Um, but yeah, it, it's a big. It, 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 it's not it's not a stepping stone to, it's probably not a stepping stone towards artificial general intelligence or whatever the breathless fucking bullshit they're trying to sell you on is but the bosses are absolutely going to try to use it to fuck you over that's that's the the key thing one way or the other no matter what this thing is they're going to fuck you with it well i i mean i think that the boss is fucking you over is one side of it but then the other side of it is like in many jobs even if you manage to keep a decent paying job like your labor process is in some way altered by this technology, right? It's something you have to like reckon with on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of how you work and how you live, whether you want to or not, because, you know, again, it's move fast and break things. It's just I, like, we don't care what your personal boundaries are or what reservations you have we're just going to deploy it everywhere like we've seen with uh, microsoft right like just just stick it in absolutely everything and see what happens right whether you, whether you want to or not and it's like i very fucking strongly don't want to like if if i had a magic fucking lamp with a genie a genie inside it i would one of my first wishes would be get rid of all of this ai shit and make it make it make it have never <laughs> fucking happened it is <laughs> even just seeing what it's doing to like the public internet is just such a fucking squandering of human potential and life you know what i mean just like everything is turning into a vortex of shit um and it's, it's just so saddening and fucking ugly and dumb you know yeah exactly like you know to um yeah like i've sort of either used like LLM stuff 
and like that that is like not public or run things on my own computer where I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. That's neat. You know, like something that's either open source or it's not a commercial product. And 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 like, you know, for example, I've seen sort of like uh, chatbots with with um, chat GPT based that can provide really good health advice. Oh, um, OK. Interesting. Like, you know, I'm not saying it is definitive, like as the best, but in terms of just sort of like um, comparing it to what you would get on average on YouTube, Reddit, WebMD, going to see your personal doctor, like it's better than average, right? I would say better than average, not outstanding, but better than average. And that's awesome. That's fantastic that that's available. Uh, or, you know, I guess could be at some point. Um, but I do worry about just, yeah, like you say, this shit vortex, like, <laughs> like it feels, it yeah. feels to me very much like, you know, archival work is really important at this point in time because it feels like we're unleashing just like a highly virulent pathogen into our intellectual universe that is just going to go through and turn everything into paper clips. Yeah, right. It's going to turn it into more of itself. Yeah, and 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 so like honestly like corpuses of data that exist from before the time this started are really going to be very valuable because they aren't contaminated. Yeah, they're like pre-nuclear steel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's like it's like this is such a strange thing to go through that like this is totally foreseeable and yet it's going ahead anyway like it's it's like like just this idea like it's like something out of a science fiction movie you know or like a fantasy novel right like the you know that the idea of like the thinning in 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 a, in fantasy where it's like you know oh the great the great ages are are past like you know the ages of the ancients when things made sense and everything worked and now we live in their shadows right like we're creating that and just sort of like blithely doing it. It, it, it it's so strange but like we've seen this happen with like gmos uh like like uh uh, monocropping and like you know efforts to sort of like preserve biodiversity in like seed bases and that kind of stuff that kind of archival work we've seen that before but and it's it's just something capitalism does but to do it like just at like the knowledge base of civilization is so weird <laughs> It, what's remarkable about it is that the, the, but the mechanism by which it's happening is such an inversion of expectations, right? That, like, because the, the big promise of computer science and all this fucking sci-fi shit was, like, oh, we'll invent these mega intelligences and they'll they'll refine human experience and culture and intellect and it'll it'll all be great. But what it's actually, what that's, what that's actually doing, what the AI, the AI, the, the output of AI as a, as a project, as a, as a decade-spanning project, the actual output is an engine that just produces a warm, dark entropy bath that we'll all drown in. It doesn't refine refine the intellect of civilization at all. It fucking erases it. But but the thing is, it could, you know, it could. It could refine it, is the thing. Like, I've seen technology that's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, this is taking what's out, like, is taking, like, a curated data set that's been carefully put together and basically working as like a subject librarian for you to go in and look at that and also to make unexpected connections between things that that a human wouldn't necessarily draw right because that's one of the things that this is good at is is uh drawing connections between things that's why like you know as this sort of like next token predictor it does that and it can be good at that and come up with interesting things. But like when you just say, you know, the data set is everything and the, the, the bot is going to respond to everything. Like you are just creating entropy, you know, it, it's like every positive useful search result or dialogue interaction you have with one of these bots is 
creating a disproportionate offset of just garbage going out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and that's that sucks. It really sucks. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And the machines are going to start eating their own shit, right? That's the thing is they're going to be trained on the output of this, like, just this this hideous diffusion of information to its like um, to its mean, you know. Be- because you 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 end up with a situation where it's either a like useful knowledge stop being produced in like 2023, and all we do is like like we were living in the fucking dark ages. Like, we just, you know, refer back to the ancient Greek masters about astronomy or about medicine, right? Like, it's it's very, like, you know, you're working on this kind of bizarre scholastic model. Um, or we just, we just, you know, continue dogfooding this shit that gets produced by the model and watch everything just become more and more nonsensical. Um, and it, it, it's like, these are, neither of these are appealing options where, you know, you're, you're either like having to rely on the knowledge of the ancients or just like living in the, the, the eye of chaos or something, you know, <laughs> it's so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's awful. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's why it's such a, it's a strange time to be finishing all this because, I don't know if we were if we were getting started now. I think we'd have a lot of material to feed on. Um, but what can you do? Absolutely, and yeah, I mean, this is all the encouragement to the listeners to go on and talk about this stuff, right? Like, do your own, do your own show. You can do it. Um, uh, and 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 yeah, and I mean, speaking about the the listeners, like, it definitely super appreciative of like. Um, comments we've had uh, interaction in the uh, GIU Discord like we had so many interesting conversations there the reading groups we did um, uh, all that's been really positive it's been incredibly positive community it's another thing like I again just like what like we started we started a left wing political podcast (laughs) and we have really a very like healthy yeah, and respectful so community <laughs> that goes along with it. It's I know like, it's so what strange. The hell? It's like every time there's a sort of weird blow up on some other Discord, I always remark that like the thing with the GIU Discord is just it's just all these harmless dorks, you know. <laughs> it's like they just they're not they're not really capable of that level of aggro. Yeah, I, I think it's it's kind of like there's something about the environment and the terms on which people engage with each other that leads people to not go there, right? And I I, I don't want to say, like, what we've been doing is superior because, like, you know, like, I am who I am. I know I'm a massive nerd. I know I'm, like, somebody who's not very prone to or not very, like, disposed towards, um, like, action and leadership and, you know, getting out there and fighting. Um and I think that comes through in the podcast. It comes through in um, the community we created. And obviously that can't be the tenor of the whole left. But I'm thankful that whatever we've created can be like helpful in some way and also generally pretty healthy. <laughs> like, like, it's like, that, those are good things. Even if like, you know, I know that's not going to make the revolution on its own. <laughs> Cause it's like, you know, I, I've been looking at like, uh, personality typology a lot lately. Um, just trying to figure things out in terms of like, you know, like who am I, what am I doing? Cause I've got like career changes coming up. Um, and I've got to figure these things out. And, the, the types of, like, you know, my type of personalities, it's like, I, I, I'm very much somebody who sits on the sidelines and watches things and comments. And, um, and, uh, that has its strengths and weaknesses. And obviously you need like all types to make things work. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm just glad it's been good vibes with the community. Um, I super appreciate all of the 
um, support we've received on Patreon. Um, definitely, there's been points where it's helped my help me make rent um, and just sort of like stay out, of, like uh, manage to avoid getting into a kind of poverty spiral. Um, and that's been like a massive help. I really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, and I hope that the the show has been what you know people uh, have. Well, I hope that people have gotten something positive out of the show for the, the the money that they've put in. We've never been like we've never set things up in a sort of traditional patronage um, arrangement or even the kind of patronage arrangement that you typically would find um, these days in, through Patreon, where we are, as we said, like at the start, like, you know, really attuned to the audience and like you know, trying to please the patron, right? Like, that's the typical arrangement with patronage. And I don't, like, I feel like a lot of the audience has given us the luxury to not do that. And that's super valuable. Um, we, I appreciate it so much. Like, we've received a lot of really good uh, suggestions for shows, uh, links to literature from stuff in the Discord. Like, that's been great in terms of keeping the show vital, keeping interesting new ideas coming in. Um, but I've never felt like I was working under like uh, uh, the, the whims of, of a patron or of that sort of like to typical like loud internet community that's going to badger you about every decision you make. Um, it's never been like that. It's been very good. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree with absolutely everything there. Like, I hugely appreciate the the audience and the, the community we've, we've developed. Um, the vibes have been incredible. And yeah, just like it's it's been it's been a real privilege to be allowed that kind of space and luxury to just produce at our own pace and as 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 we said earlier, have a very take it or leave it kind of uh, approach to the to the show, and I'm, I'm very glad people took it and uh, largely didn't leave it um, for whatever audience it had. You know, it's 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 really incredible. Um, I guess on that note, like we're going to keep the um, we're going to shut down the Patreon, like like stop it charging or whatever. Which reminds me, I need to figure that out tomorrow. Like how to, ide <laughs> ideally, how to stop it before it fucking charges on the fifth or whatever. I need to, I need to sort that out. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's make sure we don't charge people for something that's not existed. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to get that sorted. Um, I presumably there's some way to just stop charging, but without interfering with like the Discord stuff or whatever. Um, the intention is to keep that stuff going, keep the keep the Discord going as a community space. If anything goes wrong with that, if you somehow get booted out of it, email us. Um, the email address is uh, generalintellectunit at gmail dot com. S send us an email or get get in contact through Twitter or whatever the fuck, um, and we'll sort it out. You know, it, that, that's the intention is that this this keeps going and we just stop charging um, somehow. Yes, uh, exactly. And you know, uh, I think the community is valuable in itself. Uh, it's, you know, it's going to be like, we'll have to have a conversation within the community in terms of like what we want to see happen with it going forward. Um, but I would definitely not want to just like shut down the server because I know like that's a social space uh, for everybody who's there. There's connections for people. And like, I don't want to uh, disrupt any of those and I, I want to stay in touch with the community myself as well because you know it's 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 a good space to be in um yeah yeah so we'll have discussions about that but we just wanted to like you know get it out there like this is what's happening and no it's not like it's not an interpersonal thing it's not drama it's not anything like that before we had those discussions so as to not provoke um, a whole bunch of like, you know, baseless speculation because that happens in any social system when there is ambiguity about those things, right? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd also like to thank um, everyone at Emancipation, like Esri and Tom and everyone there that we've we've been, I think a, a real, it's been a real privilege to be involved in that as well and to kind of count to, to rub shoulders with those folks um that's been that's been amazing too yeah i felt like i mean joining the network listening to their podcasts um uh podcasting with them initially it felt really 
like, you know, stimulating to be exposed to a whole bunch of different ideas, um, projects, people. Uh, it's been, I think, really, really good in terms of keeping me mentally sharp and also, uh, you know, just meeting really cool people. Um, and I think that, um, you know, I will continue to podcast with them, right? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to be on Tom's show, um, uh, that I still have plans to do that. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to, to keep working with them. I think it's been a good relationship. Uh, obviously, you know, there has been, um, <laughs> there's been more drama on that side, but I don't think that it is a down to like, I, 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 I think it's like we said, right? Right. Like we've created a show that is very us and that has its advantages and disadvantages. And one of the advantages is that there's been very little drama for us <laughs> so and, little drama. and whatever, you know, whatever drama we've been involved with, with emancipation, I think has been for us personally, healthy and stimulating and and given me insight into a lot of like social dynamics on the left and what pushes people uh i know like you know i've had so many um conversations about this kind of thing but to actually be there and sort of live it out with people you know and see what makes things happen um is it's invaluable experience in terms of like growing as a person and and understanding the world better and um i'm very happy that we joined the emancipation network and i totally stand by that absolutely yeah it was it was a great move um absolutely stand by it um i guess uh kind of remaining administrative stuff um i, ha I have a sort of semi plan in mind to move move like the hosting of the um, the rss feed and stuff like that so that it's just cheaper to run in the long run or whatever and probably more stable um i have i have a weird harebrained idea that like i could host an rss feed on like archive.org or something so that it's it, and have it point to the episodes on there so that it would it would outlive it would outlive any any of us hopefully um but that'll all happen in the long run the the, the, the idea is that we're going to keep the feeds up um indefinitely keep it available indefinitely Exactly. Like I've, you know, I, I've been doing a PhD. I've just gone through a course on um, uh, research ethics and data management. And um, I fully intend to follow all the sort of best practices in terms of data preservation um, for this this podcast, because, as I said before, like archiving is very important these days <laughs> uh it, it it's it's like you don't know what your work is going to be used for necessarily uh hopefully not just feeding into it ai for garbage but um uh i i, I definitely intend to keep uh copies of the show in multiple formats and multiple locations and to keep it accessible as as absolutely as long as possible um because i I've, I've i've kind of gone through this before with uh, another project i worked on which was the um the fan translation of um the front mission games um on on playstation and playstation 2 um and that's been oh you know that was a very it was an enormous undertaking a uh, very popular project very like i still run into people who are like oh wow you did that that's incredible you know like just randomly um and it was difficult to keep the archiving going for that this was before archive.org really became such a reliable thing um and i don't think we should count on it being there indefinitely <laughs> because ca capital will destroy anything it possibly can you know like any commons that exists exists to be colonized for capital right um and so 
yeah, we're going to think about like a viable strategy into the future um, and, and try to be good stewards of that because, it, it, you know, it is... I'm not saying this is like my primary motivator, but it is something that like the page, uh, the patrons of the show have put their money into making happen. And I respect that a lot. Um, and also all the guests who have been on the show, all the people who have brought in comments and ideas. Like I want all those things to continue to be available. Yeah. I think we're, we're going to try to put together some sort of master archive of like everything, like all the episodes and all the artwork attached to the MP3s and the show notes and you know, just, just clean it up and package it for one kind of final archive thing. Um, once that's available, yeah, everyone feel free to grab a copy. Um, actually, speaking of that, like, uh, just before we started recording, I, uh, out of interest, just loaded up all the episodes in VLC just to see how long this is in, in, in time. And it comes out to, the, the whole run of the show comes out to 158 hours um, and 23 minutes, which is six days, 14 hours and 23 minutes. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of content, you know? And then in addition to that, we had the beer reading group, right? We did, which is another... Yeah, so probably around 200 hours of content. Um. <laughs> I'd imagine so. <laughs> it's a lot, but... Yeah, it's it's been amazing. This is this has been excellent, and I'm I'm kind of sad. I'm, I'm I'm sad now because um like we've we're we're making plans to just like we're we're gonna talk regularly. Like we're we're good friends. We're gonna keep talk regularly. It's just like none none of you are ever going to hear it again, which I think is kind of sad. <laughs> it is sad. I mean, I think you know, like I have you know learned that i have all kinds of disabilities i have pathological divan avoidance and adhd and i you know i'm autistic and all of these kinds of things i have chronic health problems like they get in the way of my ambitions in terms of what i would like to achieve in life but um i'm, I'm very proud of this project i think it's been fantastic there's not a whole lot of things i've accomplished in life that i am very proud of and 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 I am really proud of this. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, thanks so much to everyone. Thanks uh, especially uh, to you, June, for uh, starting this project and getting me involved. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. And, and I I absolutely like as you know, we've said this been really positive and. You know, the prospect of starting the, to do this with somebody else, like, I don't want to do it just because it's been so good. And I want it to be something that we created and was our show and was as good as we could do it. And I think it stood up. Yeah, I, I agree. And thank you, Kyle, for, for coming along on this very strange journey uh, and for doing this for so long. Um well, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, again, uh, thank you, Kyle. Thanks, everyone. Th thank you, all listeners. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, take care, everyone. Yeah. Uh, uh, victory to the workers. Absolutely. Victory to the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely.